On today's program, first, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. The opportunities this program offers the kids are just unbelievable. This international program inspires students across the globe to enjoy and participate in scientific and technological activities. This stuff is great. I got pulled in and I've been hooked ever since. Today, the Kell Robotics team examines the Peachtree Regional in Georgia. In First Robotics, they're building more than just robots. They're building a culture that prepares our youth for the challenges ahead. I believe that, uh, that everything starts and stops with innovation. So, and I, true innovation, and, and innovative applications of science and math. And then how you apply those is where things generate from. And so these kind of programs are really important for today and also tomorrow and really actually growing the world. So my personal belief is that a lot of the innovation that we've done, uh, which doesn't involve science and math, is not sustainable. So this, this particular program is of big interest to me because of that. And as a result, I've been involved. Uh, a group of students at Kell High School in Marietta, Georgia, the Kell Robotics Team 1311 would like to introduce to you an exceptional program called FIRST for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. I'll tell you what, this stuff is great. I love being here. Because this is about the kids. I'll tell you, we need kids who can do stuff like this. Our country, our world depends on students who can really think outside of the box and have the knowledge of the math and the science to make our lives better in the inventions and innovations that they come up with. Well, the game this year the is covered in like a polymer kind of stuff that makes it slippery for the robots because they have special wheels that we had to use on the robots this year to where it would simulate the gravity that's on the moon for the 40th anniversary of the first moon landing. Um, and the goal of the game is there are these orbit balls like you see on our uh, on our rack over here, and there are three different types of balls. There are blue and orange, purple and orange, and green and purple, I believe. Uh, the green and purple are supercells. The uh, blue and orange are empty cells, and then the um, purple and orange are moon rocks. Moon rocks are the basic kinds of uh, balls that you can use to score. They're the most abundant out on the field. Um, they start. Each team starts out with so many uh, in a bucket that the human players on the team can use to try and score into the opponent team's trailers that are attached to their robots. And the robots can also dump balls into opposing teams' trailers. And the goal of the game is just, you know, get as many points as you can. Now the supercells, they're worth 15 points, and the only way to get access to those is by switching out a empty cell that you can get from one of the two stations that are located on the long sides of the field from your team. And you can go bring them to your uh, human shooter player and they can trade that out with a supercell. And in the last 20 seconds of the game, they can trade the they can actually shoot the supercell for 15 points if they can get it into the trailer. The safety is of paramount importance in the first robotics competition. The uh, safety advisors is actually run by the Underwriters Laboratories, which is the internationally recognized standard for safety. These guys down the aisle here in the green shirts, they monitor the performance and progress of all the teams. They walk around, inspect team safety, talk to students about their safety programs, and see if there's been any incidences over the year, and generally just do whatever they can to promote safe industrial practices. I came to high school really not knowing what I wanted to do. I hadn't really decided. I was still trying to find, feel my way through things. And through robotics, I found something that I really enjoyed. It was a great experience for me, and it's really showed me that I can do things. It's not robotic science and technology, but I, I'm a good leader. It shows me speaking in public and things of that sort. Um, it's, yeah, it's really been a good experience. I'm this with three kids in the program. Two of them have since graduated. Uh, my last child is a senior now, and I wouldn't trade the experience for the world. And the irony of what's happened here is he's the one that started this team. It's now grown into over 40 robotics teams that we can we all work together as a giant robotics community. The irony of the whole thing is he's never touched the robot. What happened is very early on, he latched on to one of the things that first does for the kids, and that's they get them 
uh, free access to industry standard software like the Autodesk software. One of those is called 3ds Max that they use to uh, do computer animations. Well, he latched onto that, turned it into his life, and now he wins all kinds of awards. He's going off to art college to do 3D animation for movie making, um, and all because of FIRST. I mean, he was accepted into college a year ahead of time because of what he learned through FIRST. So the opportunities this program offers the kids are just unbelievable. The Regional Chairman's Award honors the team that, in the judge's estimation, best represents a model for other teams to emulate and which embodies the goals and purpose of FIRST. It is the most prestigious award presented at the regional competition. As the winner of the top award, the Carlton J. Kell High School Robotics Team was invited to the first championship in Atlanta where they will compete against the winners from the other regional events for the Champion Chairman's Award. The main thing is, you have a dream, you can make that dream happen. As the regional teams competed at the Peachtree Regional, judges analyzed the overall environment for learning created by each team throughout their season. Teams are awarded for exemplifying the goals of FIRST as well as meeting the specific challenge requirements. So go! as the Regional Chairman's Award winner at the 2009 Peachtree Regional First Robotics Competition. So what has Kell Robotics done to pursue the Chairman's Award? 
first year in Cal Robotics, I was asked to join as the education director. Basically, my job this year has been to inspire elementary school students to know that engineers aren't just, you know, Thomas the train engine's conductor. They work with robots and they work out in the field and they do things in a lab, not just driving a train. We've been doing a lot to get the kids inspired. We started with an art contest and coloring book. Some of the requirements of the art contest involved involves the student um, drawing a model of their own robot and um, the purpose of the robot would be used to clean up the environment. We were judging the third graders pieces of artwork. It was really difficult because they were really cute and some of them had uh, like fish looking robots and the, my favorite was one made out of a bean can so it was a recycling robot made out of recycled products. Really cool. That one was really cute. It was pretty much all of our favorites. The winner was one that had so many functions that it was so creative. It was really impressive. Every year, Cal Robotics hosts a Girls Get IT Night where Wit comes in and tries to introduce women, successful women in technology to young girls who also might be interested in technology. We're also making PSAs to be broadcast on Charter and Comcast Digital Cable. Last year, we got tons of responses on how do we start a first robotics team and there were so many we were like wow we really need to figure out a way to let everyone know how so we designed this program called first steps we were able to get it statewide through our partnership with the georgia department of education and we had our first seminar at southern polytechnic university well, one of the things that we did this year was uh, work with a lot of fll teams uh, either we had we started a tournament uh, at one of the local feeder schools and we had some members of the team go and help out. So we've had so many great opportunities with the partnership with Georgia Education and now we ran into this thing in Florida where they're creating an iGoogle type of thing for teachers and they want to put our first step seminars on it. The ROV um, really shows a lot of the kids that engineering and science can apply to real life problems. It's something tangible that kids can understand, and it's something that adults can also understand because not all of them know exactly what we're talking about. We can take it out on the lakes and people go, oh look, what's that? And then we can tell them and they get really excited about it just like we are. One of my very firm beliefs is that Georgia is very well positioned to move into green technology, uh, it, particularly green energy. Uh, energy is a, is a huge challenge to this country and to our state, both economically as well as from a national security standpoint. Uh, we have a lot of sunlight in, in Georgia. Georgia could easily become a solar energy leader in the world. Uh, we have a huge forest products industry. We could very easily become a biomass fuels production center. Uh, and we even have wind power off the coast out in the ocean. I, I think FIRST is extremely important in developing the technologists and the engineers of the future. Uh, if we look at from General Electric's perspective, we hire thousands of engineers every year and trying to find the right people, get more people excited about engineering is one of the key things that we work on. And this is a great way to focus some of our efforts where we want to work with high schools, we want to work with middle schools to help get people excited about the engineering and get them a feel for what engineering is all about because the problems that are solved by FIRST are very similar to a lot of the problems that, uh, that my team works on, that I work on, where you don't have complete definition, you don't necessarily have enough resources, you don't necessarily have enough time, and you don't have enough funding. And you have to still try to drive and solve the problem. And it's amazing walking around here today, seeing the varied ways that people have approached the issue and the very, very solutions that the teams have come up with. And, and what's even more than that is the excitement that's been built around what they're doing and things they'll carry with them for the rest of their lives. I think it incorporates a lot of the a lot of things about learning new things using engineering, following a new path that isn't open, that isn't available in all the schools around. And it's about meeting new people, coming together and working as a group and making something to compete with. You're learning so much and you're doing it in a fun environment. You're putting the scientific technology and math that you learn in class into real life situations. And when you're in class, you're thinking, when am I actually gonna use this? And then when you join robotics, you actually learn that you do need this, you do use it in life, and it's really rewarding. 
It's cool. Before I joined robotics, I wasn't exactly great at math. But now that I've joined robotics, math has become like part of my life. I've become better at math, and I use it in real life situations. And now I actually enjoy it, and I enjoy doing it because it's in a fun environment with my friends. From an engineering perspective, getting more young women, girls excited about engineering is so important because you really need diversity of thought in order to have the best solutions. And whether that's looking for people uh, from around the globe, whether it's people from different backgrounds and such, but bringing the different thoughts together to bear is so important. And First is probably the most successful organization that I have seen to really drive this because each one of the teams that I have talked with has a number of young ladies on these teams. Uh, several of the teams are completely uh, young ladies on the teams there. And seeing the engagement, the leadership, the excitement about engineering is, uh, is extremely important and exciting from my point of view. We're an all-girl Girl Scout team sponsored by Girl Scouts, part of the Hudson in New York. My favorite part would probably be the building process. Uh, I like to put, use my hands and put things together, and I like hanging out with my friends. Well, you know, it's, it's as important for young women as it is for young men, but I think there's some natural tendency for, um, at least certainly when I was growing up, there weren't that many uh, young ladies and young women in the science and engineering, and I think that's more just from what was the norm then. Um, I'm excited to see now uh, when I go to work there's uh, as many uh, women there as there are men and I want to make sure that continues and, and I think uh, what I see here at first is there's a lot of great bright young women here doing uh, fantastic things. Um, I get the most learning from my robotics team because I feed off them and if I have a problem I go to them and they help me solve it in a like group environment and it's a lot easier for me and like I enjoy it so much. Oh, the group environment. Our mentors I think are um, a really big thing because as opposed to learning all your stuff from your teachers, you get to learn stuff from your mentors which are real engineers that um, do this as their job and it's cool to kind of get their outlook as well as your teacher's outlook in the classroom. First is extremely important uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, as a technology company, Lockheed Martin, as well as many of the other technology companies, recognize the challenge that we have to get uh, young people involved in science and technologies. And certainly FIRST is an opportunity for those young people to get their first taste of what technology can be, how exciting it can be, and, and make it a rewarding experience. Uh, as a corporation, we need more than 14,000 engineers and scientists each year to add to the company. So with things like FIRST, we see that very beginning of people that we will then recruit. I think one of the reasons America has been so successful in the world from a technological standpoint is that we make use of our entire workforce. We're not like some other cultures where half the people don't get to participate because of their gender. Uh, certainly all of our people, every American of whatever gender and, and race or origin or background should have the opportunity for any kind of education. You know, I would say that it's a complete solution that's being looked for because many of the other programs that I've been associated with may drive just the engineering, may drive the physics aspect of it, the computer program aspect of it. But when you look at what the teams do here, it's just amazing. They have to come up with the business case for it. They have to come up with how to communicate their message. Uh, I, I think from the Kel team specifically, uh, with the 36 people involved, breaking down the sub teams, teaching the leadership, people get a chance to test out their abilities and their desires in various areas of the overall engineering company aspect. And, and that's something that first brings that many of the other programs I've been involved with don't bring to the picture. When you actually see your end product, you're just so proud of what you've done. And you've never, you would never really think that you could achieve something like this. But then when you do it, you're like, this is amazing. I can't believe I just done this. There's kind of um, the whole view that girls aren't really cool in robotics. And I think that's one of the big things that our team does is that we're kind of encouraging other girls. Because first is contagious. If you tell another girl's team and tell them about our experience with it, they'll get started and they'll, I can guarantee you'll start loving it too. The beautiful water worlds of planet Earth are being overrun with man's pollution. Fascinating underwater environments are now being suffocated by life-threatening pollution on an unprecedented scale.
plastic pollution, and other debris are rapidly cluttering our beaches and oceans, claiming lives of millions of animals annually. Some efforts have been made, but they are never enough. Government and private organizations have attempted to clear debris, such as abandoned fishing equipment. Off the coast of Florida, divers are working to recover two million tires placed in the ocean in a failed campaign to create an artificial reef. Just look around you and you can see that marine pollution is a problem that is growing worse and worse the longer action is not taken. We all face a common challenge in educating the public on how to prevent and remove the pollution that threatens our oceans and their abundant but vulnerable life forms. Students across the globe are joining with FIRST Robotics to prepare our youth with the ability and opportunity to solve problems such as marine debris which may turn to haunt our future. It started in 2005 when first LEGO League teams from middle schools across the world participated in the Ocean Odyssey Challenge. FLL developed this educational program to teach children 9 to 14 years old about using technology to solve the problems of ocean sustainability. Working with experts from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute and the Monterey Bay Aquarium, real-life aquatic challenges were created for these teams and their robots. Young students were exposed to the importance of our waters and what may happen if they are not taken care of. FLL teams expanded their understanding of our oceans with activities that emulated species sampling, creating artificial reefs, deploying submarines, and finding ancient artifacts. Over 62,000 children in 31 countries around the globe participated in the 2005 First Robotics Ocean Odyssey Challenge. Now the students who participated in Ocean Odyssey are taking part in the first robotics competition. Working with professionals from education and industry, these FRC teams engineer robots and programs to perform and manipulate objects in a competitive gaming environment. Unlike the robots used for the Ocean Odyssey competition, these robots are designed and built with industrial grade components in only 45 days. From January to April, students ages 14 to 18 race to build specialized robots which in turn teaches them lessons in engineering and problem solving. After all this excitement and education there are still eight months of the year to explore new problems and realms of technology. FRC teams are now combining what they learned three years ago in Ocean Odyssey with their new experiences in the first robotics competition to solve the problems at hand. With more technology more knowledge and numerous resources, new ideas are sprouting all across the globe as these high school students work together to preserve our planet's water. Inspiration continues to flow from the first program, encouraging teenagers to create innovative programs and machines. With everything these young engineers are learning, solutions for our pollution problems are growing stronger every year. Inspiration is surging to an all-time high in the young generation the generation whose job it has become to fix the problems of our past. Surely as time goes on, we will see dramatic change in our world, our technology, our students, and our water. With the help of willing mentors and the FIRST program, our young robotics teams are acting now for a brighter future. Well, one of the things I would like to see is, is that Georgia goes after groups of industries, not a plant here or an assembly operation somewhere else, but that we actually attract types of industries to parts of Georgia. And of course, the, the, the best type are the high-tech industries, the, the high-paying, stable, growing job opportunities. And of course, to get those companies to come to Georgia, we've got to have a globally competitive workforce people who are graduating from our schools every year who are competent in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I think it's the enthusiasm and the enjoyment. Uh, you know, when I first walked in and you listen to the music and you hear all the noise, you think, uh, you know, this is more like a concert than a robotics. Thank you. you know, you think robotics, you might think like a chess match where everybody's being real quiet. But certainly the enthusiasm of the young people, uh, the excitement that you see when they're certainly playing their games, we're walking around with their team colors on, people from all over the world with uh, their country's uh, various garbs. So uh, it's, it's amazing to see the enthusiasm.